107 episodes in. And on today's episode, we have Joseph Scandrett and Philly D, a couple of living legends in parkour, two of the best guys to ever do it, very different kind of styles, and obviously coming off the England project of from Capstone recently, and that's mostly what we talk about is just the Capstone project, Capstone in general, you know, Philly D's a founding member of that, and catching up with these guys hanging out with joe hadn't ever gotten to do a podcast with him and so great great conversation really appreciate those guys sharing their time and energy and getting this one scheduled across the pond takes some effort sometimes with <laughs> seven hours of um time zone difference so much love to those guys and to you guys for listening enjoy so tell me how you are well, i don't know who goes first but i want to know how you guys are are both doing um, sensationally well. Sensationally well. Yeah, always. That's not surprising. There's no really. point in not being happy. It's inefficient behavior. It's efficient. It's efficient to be happy. <laughs> it's very parkour <laughs> to be happy. Is that what you're saying? It's part of the mm, practice. No, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> parkour is actually a horrifically inefficient activity. I reckon. So. Great fun. Yeah. Fair enough. Please. Yeah, please. Oh, the most efficient activity is probably to work in a bank and invest in crypto. Crypto chat. Let's get not, some money, buy a house, in crypto chat. buy a boat. What are you going to do with the house and the boat? Well, I'll live in the house. <laughs> I'm not saying that I'm going to do this. Oh, no, I don't no, no. believe in behaving efficiently, but if you were trying to. I see. So financial stability is the, the, the goal here on in the to realm. be efficient, yeah. To be efficient, okay. Maybe if we were still cavemen, parkour would be efficient. <laughs> or hunting would be the most hunt important, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Horrifically long distance runs. Yeah, not efficient. That's one of the things we evolved for. We can run the furthest out of any yeah. species. True. We can we can outrun an impala, chase it down. Definitely can't swim the furthest though. <laughs> I can't swim at all. <laughs> can you not? No, nah, I can't swim. I mean, I can. I could survive in water. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can swim like a little bit. But if I'm swimming more than like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, I'm I don't think I could swim like a hundred meters. Oh yeah, no oh, way. Oh, I really, really hate it. I'd probably die. <laughs> you should. But it depends. Like front crawl, I think I'd die. Breaststroke slowly, maybe it'd be fine. I feel like I just sink. I think we should go find out one day. <laughs> Random. We should go swimming together. I'm with it, man. I'm a good swimmer. I love swimming, all right? So I'll swim across the channel if I have to. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's the... I'll bick my head <laughs> for it. Let's go. Uh, Joe, how are you doing? Um, fantastic. Oh, look at actually, these guys. Yeah, I'm quite good. Well, no, it's actually a lie. I'm okay <laughs> just about. I, I keep injuring myself. I'm having little injuries that push me back from training a little bit. But at the moment, I'm on the other end of the injury, so I'm almost good now. What kind of injuries? are you dealing with um just ankles ankles it's usually ankles with me oh really i've struggled with ankle injuries in the past like consistently since i was like 12 years old really and now yeah. it's one of those things i just have to always be kind of careful of because if i i know that if i'm gonna ankle thing a big precision i probably can't train for like a month or so which is kind of what happened recently uh, it's an ankle thing then so it's the dorsiflexion like yeah yeah this? yeah as soon as it goes too much it just puts me out for a while and hurts a lot do you know, is there anything you can do about that? I mean, ankle thing is such a, it's a, it's a thing, obviously, for people doing parkour, yeah. but it's weird. Like, I don't know if you just, if you're just born lucky and you have really good ankle I mean, dorsiflexion or not, or if there's anything you can actually do about it. Because I don't I mean, ever ankle thing. Like, I'm really lucky. You could do really? more. I, so used, to, I used to, I used to ankle thing when I started. Thing. I used to ankle thing all the time when I was first training. And then I stopped. I don't know if it was like from barefoot training. I got my feet stronger or whatever, but okay. my I've also got really good ankle dorsiflexion. So people see me pre sometimes and yeah. be like, "Whoa, shit!" And I'm just like, "No, no nothing happened. Feels fine." I'm more worried yeah, about s yeah. snapping my Achilles one day because I have such good dorsiflexion. That freaks me out. But <laughs> That's like my worst nightmare. I'd almost. My yeah. <laughs> oh, I think yeah. snapping anything is pretty <laughs> Achilles though, man. The yeah. Achilles, though. Nice. I don't know. I, I don't want to say what you're saying because I feel like tomorrow I will ankle thing, but it doesn't happen to me very often either. I also haven't shinned myself in about 12 years. Yeah. I've only done it I'm once, like once or twice. I just throw my leg. If my toe slips off, literally just like a horse kicking someone behind mm. them. 
I think it comes down to like biomechanics, like geometry of your ankle and shin bones and like the length of each thing that puts your shin either in a vulnerable position or it like for me, I'm more likely, I think, to skid out and hit my ass yeah. than I am to like shin for whatever reason. Maybe it's just because I that's my bias. The most common thing I'll do if I land badly is bruise my arch. Mm -hmm. Me too. Like just put too much weight from the corner of the wall into my arch. Likewise. But for you, it's ankle things, and then is that it? Is it impact or anything like that that agitates it? Um, impact, I'm I'm pretty okay with. Like, I can take big impacts as long as I land properly. But yeah, it's mainly just ankle thing, and which has put me out of the game. Damn. Well, speaking of that impact, I wanted to jump to my mind because I wanted to touch on this, and we are obviously coming off the wake of that capstone project, the England project. Um, I want to get real deep into that with you guys and just kind of the process because you know it's fascinating but that the rope descent let's start there real quick because you guys threw a rope around <laughs> this bit railing i'm curious just how that came about is there any conversation about like like what what got it to the level of like yeah we just need a rope and i'm gonna throw this rope out and then i did this, <laughs> massive, I did this massive layout at the end of it that's like the impact i was like yeah. jesus dude <laughs> mm. well i've been looking at doing that that chimney slide descent for over a year Mm -hmm. And I went up and looked at it before trying to just hang in from the top without a rope. And there's too much distance with the, the, long of, the length of the wall to actually get into the slide about just letting go of falling backwards. But I, I just wanted to be able to do it. So kind of mm -hmm. threw around the idea of ropes. And Toby is really good with his climbing stuff. So I had loads of professional ropes and is really good at rigging them up. Uh -huh. So I just thought... It was, it was after the actual main capstone shoot as well. It was like towards the time, like crunch time when it was supposed to be out. Mm. Yeah, probably days before. Like days it was before released. it was out. And I just thought, I really want to get this done. So just went to Brighton, um, asked Toby to help with the rope and stuff like that. And just kind of went up there and got it done. We we practiced yeah. it around the corner, like safely at a safe level, like abseiling backwards. But yeah, I mean, the rope was 100% necessary. And I really just wanted to get that line done. Dude, how did you And it nearly didn't happen. Mm. Really? So it was very impressive because <laughs> Joe had like tried it, come down, and then it's like for some annoying reason because of the architecture, it's like a half an hour journey to get back up to that route. That's what I heard. You got all the way around. I don't, I don't actually know the route. But the second time he went, there was like people looking like either working there or security sort of scoping around. He's like, oh shit, I can't go up this way. So he actually had to climb up <laughs> and then use the rope. To come oh, up. you had yeah, to shimmy was, up the chimney too. Yeah, I had to shimmy up because we. I was gonna. I was kind of like, okay, I just Wait, can't how, do it anymore. How do you even get? To, I guess I have to watch it again. But how do you get to the ledge? There's like a little bi a bike rack. Uh, yeah, a little rubbish bike rack, like to climb in and then wedge in, and then kind of get up, and then Toby had to throw a rope down so I could then <laughs> grab it and pull myself up. <laughs> I, I was stood on the bike rack, like yeah, yeah. yeah. Butt, but probably <laughs> you know, be slightly better off. Why yeah, is yeah, it yeah. that Phil is always <laughs> the fucking? The urban crash mat. Even though, you, like, yeah, you get really assigned that role for some reason. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. I caught Dom there. Dom knew that. Anyone well, yeah, else who says something, true, 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 true. If Dom thinks I helped him, I helped him. Mm. Okay. I don't know why anyone thinks that you're capable of catching them, but it, it's nice. Oh, no, it definitely I think we wouldn't catch them. Like, we'd both be in pain, but Joe would <laughs> definitely have been in less pain. pain. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it. True. Um, how many times did you end up doing that, by the way? Because it looked like pretty aggressive the way you threw yourself into the chimney slide, and so I was like, um, "Damn, I like that!" that bit, like, I practiced that bit like twice. That's it. So I did it like twice before the the final take. Damn. Um, I've done a lot of the chimney slide stuff, and again, practiced it, kind of just jumping in on a flat wall oh, around the corner. So it just felt like it would work well at the time. So I just had to send it. I, you know what I mean. Was it, yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, that moment's always a little scarier, but did it feel just like it was meant to in your head? It felt absolutely fine, yeah. yeah. Like, nothing felt really sketchy about it. It kind of went to plan perfectly, so. Nice Apart one. from the back, the back was really high, and I kind of bruised my heel on the landing. Besides <laughs> the bruised heel, I like the landing. Though. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, it's rogue. It's, I like it. It's, like, it's if, if you landed, high. like, yeah, yeah, I don't think it would have worse. I couldn't have landed many other ways, to be fair, because mm. the no, back it was fucking hot, man. I've I've always loved that idea. Like that was the first time I. I mean, there's other times where people have laid out out of a, you know, they're falling off a really high ledge, and it almost, it's like classic tech. It's the Oleg tech from like the original yeah, yeah, Russian sure. video. It's just like, <laughs> it's one way to get down that actually kind of dissipates the impact if you're facing the walls. But it's such a beastly yeah. move. 
So I love that one. I was curious, like, this is sort of adjacent, tangential, but do you guys see the... Because we're modifying spots a little bit more, it, it seems like now, um, which is yeah. like just interesting to me because the the manpower gap, we saw that guy corked it. I forget his name, but did you see that? All yeah, the, I saw that. You guys? And then the Incredible. double side just got thrown as well by some other mm. guy. I don't know. Mm. I just thought if, if do you guys have any thoughts on like, obviously a million fucking bows and everything to these guys for doing what they're doing, but is there any apprehension when you're, when you're modifying a spot, do you feel like, cause there's that ancient thread of like, Oh, it's, it's, um, not whatever, you know, part of yeah, the, I, part of I, the I, obstacle or originally there or whatever you're modifying things. Any hesitation yeah, or any I, thing that comes to mind there? No, I, I don't subscribe to that kind of idea at all of like, ah, oh, like treating the spot like a sacred and you can't, mm. you can't edit it. Like, it, like with the thing that I was talking about, especially, I would have hated it if I turned around and never could have done that descent. And the only way I could have done it is with a rope. So why not? Do you know what I mean? Why not edit the spot to the perfect way to make it as safe as possible if you can? Yeah. No, I feel you. Yeah. It's almost... I think using the rope to get the challenge done makes it more awesome. Mm. Yeah, because now you're jumping into the realm of Batman territory. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like you could get with utility belts and start to like really fucking up level your 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 game. You know, it doesn't end with the body. Um, so yeah, I'm a fan as well. But I was just curious because it comes to my mind, but it doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, I, I saw comments about it though. Like some people did like go out of their way to kind of be like, oh, it's kind oh, of really? lame that you use the rope and editing the spot. And I'm just oh, thinking, really? like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh really? About your rope thing? Oh, damn. Why don't yeah, yeah. Like, Moan about their own shit. Yeah, I like, know, why, but what, still, valid point. What gives someone the right to critique it? That's what I mean, they can say what they want, but I still think it's cool as fuck. I think it's cool. <laughs> I think it's cool as fuck in the video. Mm -hmm. oh, so. oh, man. Yeah, it's you're always going to get some shit talking, no matter what, right? Even if, especially in our community, it seems like it's a little bit over the top or a little bit too... But there's no right way of doing parkour, so yeah, exactly. shut up. Yeah. You can't... Yeah, I agree. I don't know, there's no rules that makes sense yeah the whole point of it is that there's no rules so do you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. and also as well with with the video the idea was to make an entertaining video mm. more mm. so than to make a parkour video that yeah, makes yeah. Any sense do you remember jesse peverell doing some free roping yeah. i don't know if you like did you see i've any... seen clips of him recently mm. there's been yeah, yeah. the free rope has oh, yeah. been a thread for a longer time than we even you know we trace it back there's been some serious mm. free ropes that's happened Ilabaka in Who's LA doing the the swing. Guy Storm did it. Who? What? That was a Storm video, wasn't there? Of like rope swinging around the rope. It was Ilabaka be... oh, and uh, supposed to be a lot of things, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> it was when they were in LA. Um, I think didn't Danny and and um I've seen Will Jenks Spencer and Danny and Jenks, yeah, like, they did like yeah. some. I saw them doing it like, when they like in Liverpool. Mm. I just I want to yeah, get I want to get utility yeah. belt as well. You know, I want to get the grappling hook up. I want to get the, <laughs> I think Yo. we should start. I really do some more app, more contraptions. Maybe. Mm. Did you see that? Um, store zombie video. Oh At yeah. That point, was, they set, up a, they set up a fucking zip line. That is cool as fuck. That was like, super yeah, fucking savage. And when I watched the, roof, it didn't even do it justice too. Cause when I watched the behind the scenes or whatever, the vlog of it, it was like, holy shit, that is way more intense than it even looked in the video. And the yeah, commitment sure. just to be, I don't know, like, I guess you got to love a trust in Toby's rigging skills, but yeah, yeah, just yeah, to yeah, fall off the edge of this thing and fall straight down until this thing slack catches mm. you, it was nuts. I was so upset because when we did the J-Lo video, me, Jenks, and Pitt, Jenks was the only one. He got to do a massive zip line <laughs> across Mexico City. I wasn't allowed to do it. Uh, all right. Well, back to Capstone. I want to know, like, how did you get approached, Joe? You know, obviously, J Phil, you've been involved from the beginning of this this company or brand or whatever you'd like to call it. Um, I wanted to hear about Joe's experience and like where, because you've been on a few, few different projects now. You were in the Breach yeah. film, and you're kind of like in, my, and uh, you know, this could be this is just the American watching from across the pond, but it's just like it seems like you're the community there. It's got a lot of camaraderie, a lot of brotherhood. Like people just kind of cross pollinate across teams and and do whatever but you're not exactly a you're kind of like a free agent in my eyes you're just like yeah 
you know, you're you're part of every team somehow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll rate, I'll rate that. That's one way to say it, maybe. I, I just like buzzing around with different people and different... I was never, like, in any sort of team apart from, like, three-run kind of like a... Mm. But I was never really had my own team team like these other people did. But, again, I like traveling around and seeing everyone and training with everyone. So, yeah. But in terms of, like, getting involved in the capstone thing, um, it just happened naturally because it's, it, it was still organizing it. Mm. And you can't see, but I, I almost, I almost <laughs> lived in the corner of this of this um, living room. So and I'm with Phil all the this time. Is, this is Phil's yeah, living room in Bristol. There, You're in Bristol Sorry? now, yeah? Yeah, we're in Bristol right now. And this is your living room, uh, Phil. This got, is where you're doing your studies. This is where I I sleep. <laughs> so you're you're couch living in Phil's area for the. Most I mean, part. I know, I know. He's, got, he's got his own bed. There's a mattress. There's okay, a mattress. okay. So, okay. So, a full yeah mattress. Well, it's like, but you guys are roommates. I right live now, with three other people, and Joe's good friends with all of us. Oh wait. And he likes training in Bristol, so he yeah. So just come here all the time. Pretty regularly. So then yeah, it just happened that Yanis was coming down and. Travis was floating around here a lot of, all the time, so we just thought, yeah, get We wanted we wanted involved. people with unique flavors mostly. Mm. Yeah, and Joe definitely has one of those. Ooh. Travis, I mean, too. congrats, Toby's you know, one of the best people on the planet. Toby, what? Sorry, one of the best. Toby's one of the best people on the planet. Yeah, that like, is an undisputed yeah, fact. Yeah, yeah, he's so good. <laughs> <laughs> like, across the board. Yeah, yeah, he's a legend, Ooh. man. Good dude. I wish I could. Uh, I want to come see you guys this May, but. We'll see how that's happening. Um, Do it. Welcome anytime. What is uh? Um, COVID's over. COVID's over. Exactly. Pretty much. It's done, well, baby. It's here. Okay. I hear about. It's a, no, maybe it, mass Still mandates are not over. People listening and thinking I'm <laughs> exaggerating. <laughs> <laughs> Misinformation, dude. You're gonna get me canceled. <laughs> dude. Uh, so, Phil, then you know you, Joe, was saying you put this project together more or less. Can you tell me first? I would just like to dive a little bit deep into the history, you know, with you. Just, all right, how did, I know it's Justin Louie, you and Sam that kind of birthed the Capstone project or brand, right? Yeah. How did that kind of, that, that uh, from what I remember you last told me about it, it was like you just kind of went down to Australia, you guys hit it off, and things started to so we're, we're, It's older than that. Oh, really? Tell me. Similar, similar to you, <clears throat> oh, what, four years? Actually, Sam... I met Sam in Cambridge first. Oh, interesting. But it was when Justin was in Cambridge that we started thinking about the idea. Mm. Um, yeah, I think it was four years ago. He came. We spent a lot of time together. He was in Cambridge for like a week, and then I went and saw him in London before we went back to Australia. He traveled around a lot of Europe. And then we got Sam involved, and I went over to Australia to do some of the planning with them and have a hell of a time as well, obviously. Of course, yeah. Why not? <laughs> Too far away, though. I'm never going again. They can come again. <laughs> I made like 24 hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. Door to door, yeah, probably like 30, 30 yeah, something hours. Jesus. Not fun, not fun. Yeah, and then um, lots of stress. One of the good things about it being the three of us and kind of all three of us being incredibly fussy and a bit arrogant <laughs> is it's like really complicated for us to agree on something, which means that once we agree on it, it tends to work. Mm. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, like it a does. really. A really broad Venn diagram. Yeah. Like in the middle of this <laughs> Just three enormous <laughs> circles that barely overlap. So yeah, yeah, it takes a while. Oh man. I think we're happy with Capstone as a name, which is good. I love the that name. The it's hurdle. such a. Start with. Yeah, it's so fast. It's so fitting to I think the theme of what you guys. Well, are it doing. relates to architecture, therefore it kind of relates to parkour in a way. Mm -hmm. I like. And I then, dream of a really, really dope Medusa reference at some point, especially with the snakes on that design. <laughs> I haven't come up with it yet. I'm trying to figure out. So. Yeah. And where are you Should getting these designs? <laughs> who's doing the designs and who's creating? Because, you know, I'm pretty still in the dark. I mean, I've followed you guys for a while, but I could use a refresher. I'm just like, who's who's doing the designs? And, you know, you guys are shipping. I just got my first piece of merch. So I know you're shipping from that Australian Wicked. continent. But well, I'm just curious. Sam and like, Justin how... so much work. They smashed it. The printers are in Melbourne. Mm. This is so embarrassing, but I don't actually know the designer's name, but he's a good friend of theirs, mm. mostly Sam's. And yeah. obviously there's a lot of input going in from those two as well and myself yeah. with the design. Was the was come, obviously. What was that? More things to come. Oh yeah. Obviously. What, was the dream was like the vision of it kind of what is happening now? 
And what was that? Because it seems from the outside perspective is just kind of like, all right, you guys wanted to create a uh, opportunity to create big projects, pay the athletes to participate and get, you know, make something truly innovative and original and, and just uh, incredible. And then just keep cycling that kind of pattern over to create the next project and, and be bigger and bigger. Yeah, but, pretty um, much. Okay. And design and send clothes around the world to people that genuinely feel quite comfortable and happy in them. Yeah. Makes sense. Like obviously being sort of slightly involved in Storm, for example, et cetera. I don't want to be rude, but mm-hmm. most of the clothes were whack. <laughs> the name was whack. The guy was whack. Even the videos were whack. Sorry, like and the videos no, are whack. Some... Come on, you can't be hating on all the videos, right? Sorry, I went too far. Yeah, too far. Too far, too, too far. far. I got to defend my Storm brother. But also, got... it's a lot of like we want to focus primarily on the designs and the clothing because a lot of mm. the clothing that sort of existed within parkour so far has been like that's ten percent of the effort they're putting in, and the other ninety is actually all on being a team. Yeah, Do you see what I mean? Yeah, totally. That constitutes traveling workshops jams whatever media content so it's a tiny bit of i think people's time and focus put on actually designing the clothes so what did you learn from the australia project that or you know how obviously there's a different kind of flavor to the england project i think the main and thing we england. learned yeah so sure. i hope you agree with me is we were under a lot of pressure <laughs> yeah well, that was, yeah some big boots to fill for sure because that was just, yeah a very groundbreaking video really nice mm-hmm. sort of unique style and it was awesome how a lot of people film videos for example and like i don't know scott bass would be telling someone everyone get out of the shot whereas the australia video and also the england mm-hmm. one it's like show the camaraderie i don't care if someone stood on one of the walls like yeah. and they're really happy that it's, and it's quite nice <laughs> yeah but i think even though there was like very different styles of the, of the videos even when we were shooting clips we we had an idea of like this is capstone and that isn't capstone mm. even though it wouldn't be the same movement i think a lot of it's like the spots we chose as well we didn't try to go for conventional spots as a, we tried to find things that looked visually kind of scary and do you know what i mean difficult yeah Oh, yeah. Like a lot of the, a lot, a lot of what we filmed is was at places we'd never trained. <laughs> it's like yeah, anti parkour. Like, yeah, I love that. We did a lot of scouting, especially I was doing a bit of scouting just with friends like Eli for Yanis because obviously he was coming over and we were trying to. I found this ridiculous. I'm so upset he didn't do it. Uh, but oh yeah, the he tree. definitely could have died. Oh, man. <laughs> I had this dream of this, this, <laughs> this massive tree and there's like a branch probably like that fat that just perfectly curves down. And then there's like a smaller branch that comes off it. So I was hoping that he could like climb up a tree, grind down this branch, oh and then like God. fall back and do a swing gain onto a wall. Oh it was my ridiculous. God. I showed him it, it was ridiculous. Yeah, no was... one's ever doing that, yeah. by the way. <laughs> oh my God. But we can dream. You got to dream. You got to dream big. Um, yeah, there's lots of things I'm sure that didn't make it into the video. Again, I watched a few of like Verky's vlogs. I don't know where else I'm going to, you know, the rough cut I'm sure is coming for the England project. But what what decides. Can you expand on that, Joe? Like, what what decides, like, what makes the cut in your head or or what doesn't? Is it um, just, like, how is Again, the... like, we had a clear, clear idea of what was capstone and what was hmm. not. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's no curb jumps, for instance. There's nothing done at a <laughs> curb. If it's, like, been done before, then no, definitely can't be part of the video. Uh-huh. Um, if it doesn't, if you watch it or if we were there watching it and we wouldn't, didn't freak out because it was absolutely fucking insane and yeah. you can't make the videos, you know what I mean? And obviously Sam and Justin were very involved with the whole thing, mm. albeit they were yeah. all the way back in Australia. I don't know why I'm saying back in Australia mm. as if I came from there. But um <laughs> yeah, so like they they'd have to green light clips. Oh word. Interesting, cool. Yeah. And man. Sam and Toby were working together with the edit mm-hmm. um on like I guess Zoom calls or whatever constantly. Do you guys? But yeah, we were under a lot of pressure, and I think maybe we matched the Australian maybe, video. Maybe. I think the only way that Capstone, like, I mean, not the only way, but yeah, I feel like you guys totally matched it, and not that it's in a competition, but I think you kept pushing it. So that's like, I think and that's kind of like. Stuck his arm jump. What's the? Oh, what? Sorry, Kadori. Sorry He's, about that. Oh. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh man. Um, yeah, no, it, it seems like you guys love, I mean, the, 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 it's a big ask to be making these capstone projects. Cause the whole point it seems like is to raise the bar 
And so the bar just keeps having to go higher and higher. Um, but yeah. that's like where the capstone belongs is at the top, I guess. So it's, it's definitely, yeah, no, yeah, I like that. And I think everyone sees that. It was good. Yeah. yeah. But it, it, everyone knew what they, because everyone knew what they were trying to live up to. Mm -hmm. Everyone was pushing themselves. Like during that yeah. time, I think Toby like, was on fire. Yeah. Everyone Yannis was on fire. Was such a legend. I feel so bad, but I remember it was really funny. Me, Sam and Justin were on a phone call like months, 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 maybe like a year ago, mm -hmm. trying to plan this. And because um, Yanis is very underground, I know he releases his annual videos and he did a really banging one, but he said it was his last one. Yeah. You never see anything from him from Instagram. So we went the phone when I, I'm like planning, like talking about what I was going to say to him because I was going to call him the next day to like suggest this idea of this video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, am I allowed to ask him if he's still good? <laughs> 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 no, not in those words, but like if he's yeah. still training sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. It's and it's like if he can handle pressure because it's it's annoying. Like I'm sure you've had it. I've had it where you've mm. like been on like a. I guess he saw this more as a project than a job, even though technically it was a job for him. But like when there's pressure, sometimes sometimes it makes you better. Sometimes it makes you worse. Mm. Yeah, some people. I think you were able to bounce off each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As a, as a group, it was very, very nice, very pleasant. Yeah, it was like, kind we of like as a unit the whole time. Yeah. You know, like when you'd be out training with people and you'd see a challenge or something and you'd say, oh, I'm, I might do that one day. Yeah. Everyone was in the mindset of they'd see something like that and be like, okay, I'm going to do that tomorrow. Yeah. That's kind of the way that people are pushing themselves, which is fucking sick to see. It's, yeah. it's next and level. It's just... yeah, things things you didn't see and you probably won't even see in the behind the scenes. Mm. But like, for example, when we got to Cambridge, it was quite late. We were like, fuck it, let's just get a couple of beers and walk around Cambridge looking for spots and different challenges mm -hmm. for the next day. Wow. Yeah. It's, um, how, how does it compare? Like, I think it's like that. It's that night. It's that nitric oxide or that nitrous oxide, whatever button on your car is like making a capstone project. It's like, you don't have that in you for very long. You can do it for, I don't know how long the shoot was, but like what, two weeks tops or roughly that something that, like that. Wow. Well, I that, mean, mm, obviously there was, some, yeah. there was some pepperings in, right. It sounds like there was a little bit of overlap and it gets, yeah. what is it kind of like? um layered in the shoot yeah so how long was it initially like shooting with Janet? nine days Janet nine, days, nine yeah. days nine days and we had november weather and daylight to deal with yeah and yeah. around that there were a few times that we'd meet up in brighton or other places to kind of find things and add finishing touches mm. but for the most part most of it was shot in the nine days mm. yeah like the road the road descent was, was after like that was after, after yeah. travis's like kong off that set of stairs to the windowsill Oh yeah, and then to the Darryl drop. The with the on it. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, with the I'm trying to think what else. Um, Ed stuff. Ed's was it, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Not all of it. The Brian stuff. The Brian stuff. It's yeah, and, and the, the Redding clip. Comes down the thing. The Redding clip was super late. What? No, 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 the Brian stuff was on the main trip. Oh, okay. Yannis was there. Um, what was uh? What, what? Yeah, the Redding. Well, no one's gonna know what the Redding clip was. Yeah, true. Unless they know where that particular <laughs> spot is in Redding. <laughs> yeah. What is uh? Brian's way more noticeable. Oh yeah, what 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 is the like Ed's role? Like, was he just not able to participate in the whole project, or how how was he a feature and not like a you know a main character or whatever in the? <laughs> well, so because of COVID, mm. this video was planned a lot before it happened. Mm -hmm. So that's good English. Mm. But um, when we were initially planning it, Ed was supposed to be in Dubai, in Saudi Arabia. Uh, I, Saudi Arabia. See. I see. So he wasn't going to be present. And then he came back. I and he came back. I think he was a little bit upset when he got to Brighton. He yeah. Like, Wait, what? You lost, you lost shooting the Capstone? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it would have been sick to have him there too. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it just didn't play out that way, unfortunately. Yeah, it's a, it was a strange But we still got against the Yeah, we still got the yeah. yeah. It's just what he does, isn't it? Non-stop, that guy. Um... And yeah, there were sadly a few challenges that do still need to be done. Yeah. Yeah. Tic Tac in Cambridge. Ooh. Oof. Oh, yeah. Delicious. But very scary. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I was so scared when Toby did his slap down. Oh, yeah. yeah. You mentioned that was like the, the most intense one that you think it like happened in the shoot for you to well, watch. I, we, we were looking at it together. Oh, so that I, was was, I was fully imagining. Oh, the yeah. Slap down. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Right. Yeah. So I was looking at it initially and obviously fully trying to consider doing it and i was like nah how about you joe what was, the, on those bikes. what was the hardest one for you to watch um is it even hard for you to watch because sometimes like 
<laughs> it's not hard to watch certain people. I don't know why. It's just like, uh, I don't know if... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I have no trouble watching you descend down car park. Yeah, yeah. Which, um, I, I didn't have a hard time watching any of them, I think, because I kind of know that everyone is on the top on top form and they can do what they say they're going to do. Mm-hmm. But maybe, you know when Yanis in the, at the very beginning did the Kong and the slide down the rail and then the descent? Yeah. I mean... You can tell it's wet in the video, but it was literally raining. Like, it was fucking wet. So I was just scared of him doing the descent and slipping. That's the only time where I was a bit like, oh, that's yeah. quite sketchy. But other than that, yeah. I mean, maybe him doing the side flip down to the rail. But mm. I wasn't scared as much as just waiting to see something fucking amazing. <laughs> yeah. That was another exciting one. Because I think we were looking, he, like, when we, we scouted it the night before, and then we were looking at it that morning, he was... 99% not doing it. Yeah. Mm. And I think it's Toby, I guess with his practice, we're always constantly on the move with story filming and training. He's so good at just breaking down challenges for other people. Mm. He does it immaculately. And I think with his help, and obviously Janis just being a brave legend, mm. it did get done. It was very exciting. Mm. And he somehow swerved the barrier and did yeah. it to Because yeah, yeah. if you watch it, like, <clears throat> because you're so impressed, I don't think that many people maybe paid attention to it, but he actually lands where he lands is above the barrier. Yeah. So he's actually, he has sort of like wonkily swings and then does the gainer. Exactly. No, I, I noticed that. And I was like, and you have to be wary of the curb on the left a little bit out of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Nice so like a, a little threading of the needle there. How does it compare in, um, to like our, our, cause I feel like the only time I've had experience sort of like what you, what you guys were on was during the storm America tour with you, Phil where we were all going pretty ham and at least, you know, for a couple, like about 11 and a half days or something like that, we, everyone was trying to, to go as hard as they could, or at least I felt like I was going as hard as I could. It was longer than that, wasn't it? I was there for a month. I think. <laughs> I can't remember. Maybe I was only on the tour it's for a long, long time but ago. Yeah. You guys went from New York to LA. So you went long. T- 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 yeah. Tour. So you maybe have been like, I had an absolute I, I think I went, as well. you what? I had such a nightmare on that trip. <laughs> Very scary. Well, <laughs> so stupid, actually. But we had a van and a car. And we'd stopped at a pet Oh, yeah. Somewhere, somewhere between New York and Canada. So I don't know exactly how long that journey is. But um, complete middle of nowhere. My phone and my wallet, everything, all my possessions were in the car. But I needed to take a dump. So I, like, everyone was going, people were getting petrol. Some people were getting snacks. There was no toilet in the petrol station, but like across the road, there was a restaurant. So I went to the restaurant to take a dump and people had been smoking weed as well. Everyone was like very like relaxed, lethargic. No one was paying too much attention but because there was a car in a van. Everyone in the van thought I was in the car <laughs> <laughs> and everyone in the car thought I was in the van. <laughs> so they fucked off. And I came out of this restaurant was just like, okay, no, no, hold on a minute. Like checked all the near, nearby car parks. Like, fuck, I literally can't see either of these vehicles. Did there just like uh wow hmm <laughs> luckily it wasn't that bad because like i borrowed someone's phone logged into my facebook wow. yeah. messaged this woman tara who was like taking us around um and thankfully she was online yeah. she could have just put her phone down and not check the messages for hours like some people do that would have been a fucking nightmare but they came back within like an hour and picked me up yeah i remember that i don't even remember if i was in the van or the car but i remember when I think I was in the opposite one, whatever it was, because like, what? They forgot Phil. Like, what the <laughs> fuck happened? I remember just like hearing that they were going back for you, and I was like, what the fuck? Um. <sighs> yeah. Anyhow, I just wanted to get again. Then, so what's going on? What's next for Capstone, or what's next for? I can't tell you that, Brandon. Come on. Cheeky Come yeah, on. That's a cheeky question. <laughs> oh. It'll ruin the surprise. <laughs> All right, but you know what it is. Do you already have? Mm-hmm. A, do you already know what it maybe is? I do, maybe I don't. Oh shit! They're not getting. Maybe Sam knows what it is. I don't think. Maybe Justin knows. knows what it is. I don't think he knows. <laughs> uh, can I ask you some more cheeky questions? I mean, you I'm just gonna, try. and then we'll see what happens. I'm just curious, you know. Well, how much are you offering athletes? Is it? Like, how much do you want to? Are you where you want to be in terms of, like, how much you're paying people to, to participate in a capstone project? And Because, obviously, you know, that's that's always a big part of what we're struggling against as parkour athletes that, is yeah, making, making usually, any kind of usually. income and, and being able to take the it's time annoying. out of work. Parkour, athlete, parkour athletes need to unionize. 
stop undercutting each other for less money. Mm. Or, and most importantly, stop doing things for free. Mm. Like this world chase tag stuff. I think it's cool. It's exciting. Mm. But why is everyone doing it for free? Yeah, no, I didn't know it was for free until I um, I recently had a talk with, with somebody from our, you know, the Colorado team's doing really well here at Apex. But yeah, I, I don't know. know about the crazy is it, American is it, is version. Is it free, it's free in America as well? Do they not get paid? Well, I, I don't know. I, I'd have to talk. It's crazy. It's on like ESPN or something. Yeah, I yeah. I thought they would have got they paid. Are, they not. are trying to unionize, I think. I got to talk to, to um, someone from that team and get better details on that. But basically, it sounded to me like they – they get prize money if they win and they can, you know, maybe, maybe cover their expense to get out there and do the, participate in the competition. But most people are walking away at a loss financially. Well, yeah. And then also you've got to take into account if you're an adult, you're also missing time. You could be working. Yeah, exactly. So you're not only not getting paid, you're actually losing money because yeah. you're losing time. Exactly. And if you're employed, time is money. Technically. Some of exposure, it. bro. Oh, I suppose it's nothing. I've got 30 K baby. <laughs> <laughs> Exposure. <laughs> exposure. I don't want to be exposed anyway. <laughs> I mean, well, you had I a really, you had a poignant part in, in the I've breach documentary, it. Joe, when you were talking about that. Like, how is is that, is that changing? Is that anything like you want to elaborate on? You know, with how, when you get offered to participate in breach, and they're saying, or not breach, sorry, um, capstone, and they're going to pay you. How much mm. is that a relief for you to say? Um, it's a relief, of not course, a, but. I mean, that, it wasn't the main reason why I was invest, invested in doing the video anyway. Of course not. Yeah, I mean, if I... If... The, the, main, the, the main part was just being involved in something that could have you know, made an impact in the scene or something like that. Totally. Yeah, it's... um, It's like, I didn't even actually know that that was something that Capstone did until I don't even know where I heard it. Maybe on the store podcast you did, Phil. But... Well, it's it's, it's like a... I thought it was like More purely for the topic. purely for the participation. I mean, it's kind of a badge to participate in a project like this that most of us would want. So I don't even think I don't really like the term flex, but I do quite like the fact technically speaking, the only person that didn't get paid is Action Bronson. <laughs> <laughs> That's tight. Yeah, no, I think it's good that you guys don't even have like the, the way the project... Actually and Sasha. Sasha denied oh. payment. Oh yeah. Good on him. Legend, he's an you're, legend. You're a legend. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's um, it's cool that you guys are flexing on the, and being able to do provide that, and also knowing that you didn't, you wouldn't have to for people to still want to participate in it. Um. Yeah. But that's super cool. Can you tell us how much people get paid, or do you not want to? I don't think that's something that should be discussed. To be honest with you. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> Is that am I? I mean, I think I uh, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm on your. Yeah, I think it's just it's, it's not it's not crazy or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, of course like, not. No, no, no. I mean, it's, I, everyone got less than they deserve, probably, but still, mm. it's a start. I'm just being nosy. Oh. <clears throat> no, no, fair enough, fair enough. The people want um, the people want to hear. I was exciting. <laughs> it was brilliant. No, but <laughs> if if you're invited to be in a project, then you'll find out what you're going to get paid, and you'll mm. agree to it. Until then, it's not any of your business potentially. I don't want to sound rude. Do you know what I mean? No, it really isn't. No, I, I feel um, I feel you. I just had to ask. But Sam, Justin, uh, and I were very adamant that everyone does get paid. That's super dope. Yeah, no, that's one of the reasons I think I've been reluctant to um, and to do certain things that I would have wanted to do is because I'm like, well, I don't want to. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't want to create something where I wouldn't be able to like elevate the athletes, you know, in some capacity. And elevate well, it's, well, it's, elevate it's, the position of the parkour athlete, like just baseline. If if it's uh, exploitative, or even if it's not intended to be exploitative, but it's just it's reliant. It always it's is reliant, though. Yeah, if it's reliant on people just doing it for free, then it kind of is. Yeah. Well, also, it's it's kind of one of these things where, if you want an organized, like, say, we had nine days, very stressful, lots of sort of people had to be. I hate to say on job. Why yeah, but on job. It's on job. On job. So it's like if you, I do think partly as well, and this might sound a bit whack to say, but if you pay people to do a project, they are going to try harder. <clears throat> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's it's sort of you've agreed upon that. Whereas instead it's like, oh, come along with us, we're going to film this video. Obviously they were excited to do it anyway. Luckily, mm -hmm. 
but maybe people wouldn't be out on job or like you've got left leg to stand with. You're right. Come on, guys, we're moving on to this place. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, I mean, it, that's the that's where we want it to be is professional. And so we have to at least start modeling it out. And you can't do things professionally yeah. for free. As a company, you want to set a precedent of decency. I think, yeah, people should always get paid if they're going to do. So. Well, especially ridiculous jumps. Yeah. <laughs> Putting your life Danger. at risk, you know. Um, no injuries as well. No, no doesn't Yeah, there were no injuries. injuries. Yeah. Yeah. None, just a little bruised heel here injured. and there, just right. a little ankle thing yeah, here yeah. and there, but nothing, nothing at all. Nothing. Yeah. That's well, I think we, most of us were dealing with niggling injuries the whole time. Mm. That not. That's the constant plight. Dan, how's actually. your body, Brandon? Uh, it's surprisingly good, I would say, for my age. I mean, I'm 33 now, so I'm one of the. Is it? I'm. I'm. I'm Wait, what? I never knew that. I. You I look, mean, I definitely did know that at some oh, point, okay. but I've forgotten. <laughs> I thought you might. Yeah, you look good, bro. Hey, yeah. bro. You know, I, I keep it. Hey, you guys, you guys, come on, stop it. <laughs> um, I feel like parkour has kept me young and kept me like active and kept me caring about my health, and it's been a good way to motivate me to be really diligent about you know just everything I eat and learning more about my body and inflammation and things that like have helped me stay in the game. I would say I think I'm also genetically a little gifted. I'm not a very big, dude. So that helps, you know, I think your joint to like body mass ratio is, is a super key factor in your longevity. If you're like a thin dude with big joints, you can probably last decades without even much to, to worry about. But if you, you know what I'm saying? If yeah. you're a heavy guy and your joints aren't like super big, it's just gonna, they're going to disintegrate faster. So I think that's me. I think that's hundred percent me. I mean, I'm short, but like I'm kind of big. You got, you got the thickness. Yeah, I'm, not, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm thick. <laughs> well, hopefully your bones and your I got, joints. I got, are I got too. lucky. I got, I got. Well, Ukrainian, not Russian anymore. Ukrainian joints. Yeah. No, but I feel good. My right knee, because I had my meniscus removed like twelve years ago. You know, it sometimes gives me trouble. Sometimes swells up still, but only on days when I'm shooting like something very high impact and i'm you know going after it a lot um which is kind of what i tend to do so yeah that's i gravitate i feel like <laughs> this is my pitch to you phil but i feel like i would love you know i feel like I've, i'm the type of guy that would rather participate in capstone than to dick around training in some ways you know because i only have so many miles left on my body i want to get the most out of them you know <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to just uh i mean i love the curb jumps too but it's just it doesn't excite me in the same way i'd rather push myself i'd rather you know innovate and and see what i can do that i've never done before okay i agree with that 100 percent. that's the way how old are you joe <laughs> i'm 26 oh yeah young pup yeah but just, yeah but just entering your prime body. you just entered the prime <laughs> i don't know man i hit my prime when i was like 17 i think <laughs> no, you oh, didn't. No, I did. <laughs> when i was like, when i was 14 when you were a gymnast Nah, but when I was doing double <laughs> gamers onto my face, <laughs> I mean, damn. And Phil, you're thirty. What thirty? Black. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Are you twenty nine, twenty six? Never ask the women their age. Yeah, precisely. <laughs> uh, I am thirty in five months. Five months. Oh shit! You haven't even seen. You guys are. Months. You guys are just young, man. I did. I did some of my biggest challenges in the last three years. I would say for myself. You know, the ones that meant yeah. something to me. Yeah. So I'm here to tell you there's hope. There's hope. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're not, we're not upset. Why are you, why? I'm not worried. Okay. I'm worried, man. <laughs> I play snooker now anyway. Parkour's done for me. True. True. That's See true. me at the crucible. Yeah. <laughs> and what do you guys do? You got any other hobbies? Go for on. me? What I have hobbies? Yeah. I've I'm started hobby. taking a stand up comedy class. Wow. And uh that's like something that's I'm gonna try to move my fear addiction into so that I can like because it's super terrifying to be on stage or whatever, but it's like all right, if I can like transition then I can like get that hit of <laughs> of uh stress or whatever <laughs> in um in a domain <laughs> in a domain where my body's not gonna disintegrate and wear out, you know. I don't know if that's actually for me, but that's like a hobby I'm trying right now. I ride nice. bikes. I ride d dirt jumpers. That's sick. Um, okay. I want to ski, but I'm too poor. 
Oh, and, I'd love to snowboard, yeah. And uh, I want to just travel a lot this year. What do you guys, what are your hobbies outside of this? Um, I recently started skateboarding like a year and a half ago. I've been skating a lot recently, just kind of putting myself, because it's so fucking scary. Mm. And I feel like with skateboarding, I just feel like an absolute novice again, and it's good. Well, I've been training parkour since I was 11. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm 26 now, so I've been training for 20, uh, for 15 years. So, wait, did I get that right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah, I've been training for a long time, and it's good to just feel like an absolute novice again and mm. almost get scared. Like, I wouldn't get scared doing like a little concrete, but I get scared trying tricks on a board, so it's kind of getting that. I'm not going to say rush. But I don't do parkour for a rush anyway. Yeah. But it's, it's overcoming, over, feeling like I'm overcoming in obstacles a lot more and lo- on a lot more frequent basis. Yeah, no, I feel you there. I started to uh, pick up tricking, I think, a little bit for the same reason. It's like, oh, I can actually new learn new things. That's such a satisfying thing to do. And when you're at the top of your, your skills already, you know, you have to go to such extremes that those extra little incremental gains are so, you know, effortful. <laughs> we, de- we definitely could all learn new things in parkour but that doesn't mean we have to yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. well and you really push the boundaries joe with your pull slides and things like it's not something that you still see almost anyone doing especially positions that you're sliding in are you yeah are you conscious of like where that's going or is it just like something that happened naturally and you're developing it into- i just uh, partly again because I'm, I'm kind of forced to see things in a different way now because of certain injuries like my ankles I'm not going to go to a spot and train concrete and things like that. Mm. So I need to try to find things that work for my body, but I still find interesting. So that's kind of where all the pole things came from because it's not really any impact on the body, but one, it's working out this weird, being in a weird position. And two, yeah, it's just overcoming that and are, doing it. Are you going to be able to not even speed step and just like launch yourself into that koala hug thing? I think well, so. Because it looks so, yeah, like you're real level. close. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think you I think you want to so. be tense your abdominal muscles for oh, that. Mate. I'm good. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> well, imagine winning yourself. And I wouldn't. Down. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine it. I'm afraid it's gonna happen. I couldn't imagine because it does like it doesn't hurt, but you can feel it on your stomach. Mm. But I don't think you'd ever let go just because you was a little bit winded. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, oh just oh. I've been winded in ages. That's. Mm-hmm. I did oh man that's that's a really scary too like you can be up real high real quick with a pole like that and yeah yeah for sure I worked through but the I challenge feel like it's, sorry it's really safe like it looks like whoa but like yeah. I feel like these things are quite safe when you actually do them because essentially you're launching your whole body there was one or two where I kind of didn't catch in the position mm. and like pretty much missed my legs but when you're flying at the pole you're gonna grab something and do you know what I mean? <laughs> you it sounds grab catchy. something. It sounds sketchy. <laughs> I, I'm not making it sound very yeah, good. No, it sounds sketchy. Me. But, me. I do believe you. Don't but like, yeah, like. even if you're in a compromising position when going for those skills, mm. there's always a way you can catch yourself. I can't imagine a situation where I go for it and then just end up on the floor without actually grabbing it and decelerating. Yeah. I worked through one challenge like that. Uh, you inspired me to try, I think, with... It was, you know, there's a lot of traffic lights in, in the States, these big green poles. And I did one and I was terrified, but I did find it like a lot safer once I started to just accustom myself to it. I was like, okay, I can yeah, just sure. like, if I, if I get my arms and legs or legs around it, not even and legs, but arms or legs yeah. around this thing, I can squeeze it hard enough that I'm not going to die. Yeah. But for sure, to for go sure. into it with momentum is just like, so scary and like i yeah know. this, this is it. i think a lot that and a lot of the things i do in general are more scary than difficult yeah i mean when, when you actually put yourself in the position of fully trusting yourself and going for it is we even though it looks quite extreme and scary mm-hmm. realistically if i've done this at the floor so many times then there's not really anything that can go wrong unless i then panic in the moment and do something stupid mm-hmm. we don't do that but we don't do no, that we don't do that no I'm curious to see how far that gap can get between the vaulted thing and the pole. And like, I've got one. Because I've, <laughs> I've yeah, seen some. Gang. And there's, there's two ways into it. One's a big running creek to rail, and one's either a hurdle or concrete plier to rail. Where is it? Uh, near the Benefit. In Bristol, let's go there tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> 
But the poll's quite fat. How fat can the poll be? I think... And like, then you got to plyo out. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, we'll talk about this tomorrow. Yeah. And, and just to make it really tasty, so that there are bike rails underneath the pole, so if you do mess it up... Oh, the one there, yeah. No, no yeah. fucking way. No fucking way. That's impossible. <laughs> so if you pull off the pole and you land like on your back on a bike rail, maybe a bike even, that'd be fun. I mean, jump into it like this would be okay, but... Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I never get oh, the jump by shit. That. Like you massive. could do the jump, <laughs> jump, spin 180 upside down grab like this. I I'll feel be like because you, you've like been doing variations. that, oh, you've kind wow. of been doing that, but I mean, it's just backwards, but it's kind of like, yeah, that's sort of you're getting it's comfortable in these positions where I feel like eventually you're gonna like just helicopter yourself and you'll be like, I'll grab whatever honestly, position honestly, I need. <laughs> at the moment, I'm like looking for a new variation that is pretty fucking out there like it should be cool if i managed to get it oh my god you gonna tell us what it is? i can tell you but it's hard it to explain like imagine I'll keep it a surprise i mean yeah i can explain i don't think it even makes sense <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, keep it a surprise all right, <laughs> <a secret. laughs> all right well let's get into some fan questions now since we got some for you guys that we put up on post and um there's a few of them here so i won't want to take up too much time on each one but um from uh, we got a friend out here in ross allen in colorado he asks has phil's approach to training changed in the last decade i mean come on of course it has right but how so yeah it definitely has. how so but not intentionally ah uh, that makes sense please mi- elaborate like natural i want to say natural regression that's a horrible <laughs> word but well like i don't know I'm still passionate about parkour when I'm doing it, but not when I'm not. That makes any sense. It makes this too is going much back sense. more than 10 years, but like when I was a kid and I was training, I literally, I used to have challenges I'd do on the walk into town and I'd do them every single day and on the way back. And I'd be like looking at walls. I'd even like use my fingers to jump from walls. Did you ever do that? <laughs> nah. Now, if I'm not training or watching a parkour video, no, I'm not thinking about parkour at all. Mm. I don't lie in bed wanting to do challenges. I just don't like, yeah. And that wasn't a planned thing to happen, but it happens, and I'm perfectly happy that it did. So, yeah. So that was a terrible answer. I mean, I, I get you. No, it was great. Are yeah. you you're you're happy? But you're studying economics now, and you're feeling really cool, like good about that. Sounds like, and just mm-hmm. going in. The, oh, well, sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Some of it's quite. Dull. Joe, are you doing other things outside of parkour, Joe? That are taking up your time or um, to like no study? i literally just just do parkour at the moment i'm literally just traveling around um scouting stuff and training with other people i'm kind of fortunate enough at the moment that i have a clothing sponsor oh, nice. that pay me monthly so i i can afford to just Hell do yeah. parkour full time so mm-hmm. i'm essentially being paid just to do parkour at the moment which is a position that a lot of people aren't in which we should we should be more available for parkour athletes yeah more people should be able to just dedicate the time to parkour because they're talented enough for sure. Yeah. Mm. Well, you're getting there. Thanks for blazing the trail. I mean, what's your clothing I sponsor? I think if more movie directors were smart, mm. parkour athletes would have money. Yeah, I've seen some terrible. How many parkour did some? Stuff. How many? Yeah, exactly. Oh my God, you're right though. There's, so many. There's been some savagely embarrassing like parkour stunts in films yeah. that I've seen still to this day. Um, all right. Next question here. What the hell? Oh, for Joe, how do you look at uh, spots to come up with unique movement? Um, kind of covered it. From I home. mean, yeah, I spend a lot of time just. I mean, Dom Dom explains it quite well that we don't look at spots like this. We're looking at spots like this. Um, we're not looking for a spot that like has jumps that you can run across. When mm. I'm looking for a spot, I'm mainly looking up and down on buildings or uh, yeah. things to drop down and things like that. So, yeah, that definitely impacts the way i see spots a lot of the time i I don't even like training at conventional spots and maybe that's partly down to me being picky or whatever but i i have a clear idea of things i want to do and they always lean towards just climbing down stuff i suppose (laughs) yeah you've become one of the most accomplished in that realm i mean if not Mm. the most like the descents that you've done like the comfort you have at that height the the innovations the Oh, that's the koala bear when you do like those i-beam ones like I, no one's still doing those but 
those are um super cool because i've seen them you know all over but it's just terrifying to to want to go up there i guess for most people is it yeah. something that you feel like is going to continue or is it something like with um like if you are you going to want to try to invent new descents more than just doing the same one uh, sorry what am i trying to say basically are you, do you ever get sick of the ones that you've done like you've because i've seen you do less of like just the straight traditional cat hang drops i think over the yeah. years and is it because you feel like you've kind of exhausted that technique that you already know that um is it a lot of it but i i think i've, I've done a lot of them like all the obvious ones that are in all the obvious places where people train i've just straight i've done them oh uh, yeah and i don't and a lot of them are quite dangerous and I've done them and ticked them off the box, but I don't want to be doing them again because it's just kind of yeah. putting myself in that very awkward and dangerous situation just for, for what really I've overcome the challenge. <laughs> and yeah. But challenges like that, the whole once is never phrase. Yeah. Yeah. Long. No way. I mean, yeah. With a jump, maybe, but I still don't agree. Mm. Like, no, once is forever. That's what I like. You got to do it and you got to stick it and then that's mm. it. But I mean, I'm not, I'm not actively looking for new techniques or anything, but, if I see a spot that will accommodate something and I think of an idea, then I'll kind of go from there. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. Next up. I'm, I'm guessing this is for Phil, but the barefoot training video, you whispered about the sock video. What's going on with this? Uh, you whispered about this many lines. It turns out, to, believe it or not, training in socks is very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much worse than barefoot. Um, I, I don't know. Um, like yeah, I'd love to promise the community a sock video, but who knows? You're not. To be fair, whenever I take my shoes off, I do get quite excited to try challenges. Because yeah. I think I'm just outrageously lucky because I'm quite heavy, but for some reason very light on my feet. Very bad with his hands. Though. Yeah, yeah, very heavy-handed, <laughs> <laughs> like shovels. <laughs> no, I think I was lucky. I think the reason I could train barefoot is just because of that fact. Mm. Essentially, but. Yeah, I don't know. I, I've, I've done some things in socks that people are impressed by, but I think they're just idiots and they just never jump in socks. It's actually a lot easier than you think. But I don't think I can do play. anything that gangster, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. I mean, like it wouldn't be that good a video. There's just no way it would be that good a video. So you'd have to like, like get socks. real tight on the sock and just do some slow mo's of the sock to like keep people. Well, also, <laughs> like, I feel like the audience would need to know how thick the socks were. No, <laughs> Does it have rubber on the bottom? Does it have little balls? Or... Oh, no, come on. What, do those socks exist? They yeah, do. They do. Yeah, 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 yeah. I actually got a pair upstairs from. Uh, <laughs> all right, next up, we have a question from Michael Sliger. What is the biggest height you've ever dropped? I'm assuming this is for each of you. I mean, Eli, who's upstairs, my housemate, he's got a theory because we went to this cliff jumping place and it turns out I'm actually really scared of jumping on things <laughs> into water. He, he reckons I'd jump up higher to grass or concrete than I would to water, which is potentially true because I did a jump like a slanted bit of grass in Bristol, which I think is about as high oh, I saw that as, yeah, as the thing I jumped. That was the that one where you kind of like rolled sideways out of it almost because it was slanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did yeah. that huge. It was like an over the rail. You popped down and then you took a huge. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Yeah, yeah. That was a. I think maybe the slant helps. I think of What's course, your theory, right? I think I think, I think it helps. does. I mean, it's just like the ramps yeah, in a BMX. It like, made it easier to just dissipate the impact and then roll. Yeah, you mean the noise? That's rolled the wrong way. I 100 percent think yeah, that's that the case. That's actually awesome. We need to go there more. Mm. What about you, Joe? Dom did. Just... I'm trying to think. I don't know if this is actually true, but I feel like it might be true. I think I worm cast did higher than I have just jumping or something. <laughs> nice. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So makes... I think from the highest worm cast, I, I wouldn't even like want to like hang drop it unless I was like, ah, I've got, I'm here now. Yeah. I'm gonna have to do it. I might have to do something cool in worm cast. <laughs> so I think I, I've only been in the position where, because I don't want to take massive high drops anyway. So when I've been in a situation where I'm forced to take that huge drop, it, it would usually be a worm cast. So, yeah, maybe some of my highest worm casts are my highest drops. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think. That makes sense. I don't know, but I don't think that high. Like, sorry, whoever asked the yeah. question, I don't think the answer is very impressive here. Yeah, I don't. I don't really go. Maybe that maybe high. the windowsill <laughs> at the end of long hair. Mm. Yeah. But I don't, well, the thing is also it's like as far as documenting in your head the achievements you've made over like 16 years training, uh -huh. high drops aren't one of them. No. So I don't think I ever really. I don't yeah. remember. Unless you're like, oh, a minute. 
then or if it's like an accident yeah. and you like didn't mean to take the drop but you took it anyway well that's what i'm you, thinking if i've yeah. fallen from a client's high yeah, but i'm I've, not sure i've done that also but then worm casted from there afterwards <laughs> you fell so I, so I, I, I fell you were falling and you did worm cast <laughs> no i fell and then you are like, batman no, I, <laughs> I fell so okay i'm gonna have to do it again and then did it again okay. but then did it as i was supposed to with the worm ah uh, fair play fair play fucking hell yeah i don't know what is it about water that scares you jumping into it? So it's um. I want to take mind, you to Guernsey. I'm not scared of water. I I don't mind swimming. I don't mind dipping. In. I love going to the sea when I'm in Brighton. But it, it's it's going deep. It's the higher you jump from, the deeper you go. And I, I'm really scared of being like far from the surface. <laughs> Basically, I, want, I don't want to drown. Is all. I'd like to take you to Guernsey, Wyoming, and see how high we could get you to jump off of something. Like if it was my ambition to become Greg Luganis, then I'd be upset. But fortunately, it isn't. So. Is that our diary, though? Yeah. Banging on about the other yeah. day. You had to sneak that in there, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't want you to think I planned that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, because I, I, I shout it when Yanis does the 360 dive roll. Okay. Because Yanis is the new Greg Luganis, who is the best diver of all time. You're American, so if you don't know who he is, you're a terrible patriot. I have no idea. Sorry. Greg, I, it sounds familiar. What's his name? <laughs> Greg Luganis. He's the greatest what? Just a really good diver. Diver. Oh, okay. Yeah, I am a I am a terrible patriot. I will admit to that for sure. I mean, I'm joking. I don't. <laughs> oh well, I still am. I got <laughs> um, do you know how much this is from the life of Shay? Do you guys know how much influence you have on the younger gen- generation? It's kind of a mm, interesting one. Do we know? Yeah. I mean, no. I mean does yeah, he no. know? I mean, I I don't know because I used to I used to look up to all the older guys, I used to look up the Chase Armitage and people like that massively, and they influenced me wanting to see parkour and things like that, but I mean, it's not something I'm really conscious of, mm. or, yeah, I'm kind of just worrying about training and having fun in myself more than trying to make an impact on younger people, even though it's definitely happening as a byproduct, but it's not something I actually am um, looking into doing. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, that sounds, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. like I don't care about like, the kids. No, I care about the kids. I care about the kids, but yeah, do you know what I mean. I'm doing yeah. me. I don't think the kids know who I am, which is sick. <laughs> I'm sure the young generation don't know who I am. Yeah, they should. We're gonna have to educate them. But I reckon, I reckon if, if you've been doing parkour more than six years, you might know who I am. But yeah, I think paradoxically, if you were trying to do like what the if you were like, oh, I got to be a good role model, then no one they wouldn't you wouldn't be one. Because I feel like for a young person, the dream is to be doing what you want to do and just doing you, right? So if you were that, that's, you know what I mean? Like yeah. if you weren't doing I mean, you. What, you mean, you mean in, in life in general or in parkour? In life in general. It's like, you're not going to look up to some guy that's like, I mean, as a kid, like you might respect somebody as you get older, who's, you know, got some other mature traits, but you're not going to be re- looking up to a person that is just doing it for the you know to to help set the role model for kids because that's never the role model that a kid wants um especially when you're a teenager you're not gonna yeah you're not gonna you're gonna you're gonna want to you want you what you want to see is that it's possible to do what you want to do in life and not do you know what um it's expected i think the only only good influence you can have on the younger generation of parkour is maybe just that they look after their Mm. bodies a bit Mm. yeah true and like sounds lame take their own park or whatever like yeah do their own shit well it's 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 if they pay attention to you i mean you're good dudes you're gonna you're gonna find like other traits about you that are virtuous by by the fact that you guys are um you know getting to it takes it does take certain discipline it takes a certain attitude it takes a certain amount of like positivity to get to a high level and all the good stuff that you know people are kind of expecting of you but yeah it's i don't know I don't know the people that are that conscious of it that are super that are in that space of like at least trying to appease that. I mean, they might know that it exists, but they're not really orienting to it towards it. Um all right. One more here or a couple more here. Max Henry asks Phil, what is your favorite Cambridge mission of all time? Now we're going back. I kind of feel like maybe it's probably not going to happen. But we should maybe try and find some night missions in Bristol. Are we just too old? 
Yeah, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I used to love them. And taking people on them. Um, I don't know. Surely Max Henry's been with me in Cambridge doing nightmares. So why is he asking this? <laughs> I don't know. He's <laughs> probably just more, trying to do me a favor. More... Trying to pump oh, up my okay, questions. Yeah, okay. He's got one for you I too, Joe. He's got one for Joe. He says, what pushed your style in the direction it did from Beast Powerhouse moves in Basingstoke to now um, <clears throat> being a beast in a very different way? <laughs> um, I, if you, I think if it means like I used to do a lot more flips and things and focus on doing like big double flips and like trying to get yeah do it like gargle trick things outside. Um, what kind of changed it? One like flips on concrete hurt a lot. <laughs> um, so yeah, I kind of didn't want to be doing these things anymore. <laughs> I used to like do a lot of competitions as well, so I'd be happy to like go and throw down like my hardest biggest tricks um, in competition. But I mean, I think that ships for like the young the younger guys now. Yeah, I don't. I have no interest in doing new big tricks like on concrete i'd i'd rather do things that fit to my style and i have fun training do you know what i mean so it, it, yeah it became a lot more about just having fun when i'm moving and doing interesting things as opposed to just trying to get the hardest flips and yeah. things like that true i feel yeah i think that's a natural path for any almost any of us you know but let's see define your style in a nutshell both of you, nutshell defi definition. I mean, that's a silly question because you're like Joe can define my style, and I can define stride. One we leg. can't. We can't. <laughs> you can't define define your own style. I just feel weird. I just feel it's a bit. Your weird. style's weird. Weird. Yeah. I'm not gonna take these fan questions anymore. They're just not, you know. I'm just kidding, you guys. But it's, come on, some of these are kind no, of. No, 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 no. Keep, keep going. Sorry. I just. I don't know. No, I feel I mean, you. I do. Uh, there's some. I am thinking that, of my style is irrelevant. I think what the Surely. problem is is like. Oh, no. You know? No, it'd be interesting for people to think what you think of your own. That's the purpose. Oh, interesting okay. to other people. Okay, you know? I like balance. That, that's such a rubbish answer. Oh shit. I like jumps for good form. That's what I like. That's what I hope my style. I hope my style is anyway. Yeah. And then for you, it was stride, one leg stride. Is that what you said, Joe? No, no, that's, that's, that's how I define <laughs> his like, style. I see. See, yes. Yeah, the yeah. one foot. The one, what's yours? weird weird <laughs> just weird shit <laughs> did they say to find your style in one word <laughs> okay three words four maybe weird i don't know it's just weird and almost not even parkour but just yeah weird. parkour's whatever you make exactly that's what, yeah that's what i'm saying though, yeah, just, sorry yeah but okay. that is true it's 100% true this one's kind of rude phil but i'm gonna ask it anyways why didn't phil stick with the bald head I oh, think they what? meant shaved head. Um, Why didn't they stick with, stick with the shaved head? I mean, put simply, I just did a bit of research because I am balding. So I thought before I actually like just have to shave it all off, I'll do a little test period and I'll shave it off and be bald for a little bit. Yeah. See how people react to me. And it wasn't that bad. <laughs> so now I'm not scared of balding anymore. Hey. But until I absolutely have to, <laughs> I'm keeping my head. <laughs> and I'm gonna start researching, and like my hat game is gonna be strong. You Ooh, watch, you yeah. watch. Hey, we all got a strong <laughs> hat game right now. I got, I'm, I'm pretty fortunate. I don't know, we'll see, but I'm still a little bit scared. I've been scared since I was 12 though, because I've just got a high forehead. It doesn't. <laughs> I got, I've got a five head. That's a dude. long. That's 21 years of fear. Yeah, dude. It's just like I should just know that it's not going any further back, but it feels like it can't be that big. That five head. All right, last question from Mel Tutos, our last guest. She asked if you guys are ever coming to Denver, and if so, when? I mean, I've been there. True. Most when are you coming back? Um, potentially, to be perfectly honest with you, unless I had a job there, the only reason for me to come to Denver is John Reynolds' wedding. Ooh, well, that could be coming up quick. Which though. hopefully is in Denver. I imagine it's in, or at least Colorado anyway. Yeah, no, it would be. That could be soon. Yeah, I know he's, yeah, I don't know. I, I think he's engaged. I, yeah, he's engaged. Yeah. He's engaged. Do you still see him? I never really saw him because he was a little bit before my time. So I see, uh, I've okay. seen him, but like, we didn't get that overlap. Like he was training with Dylan and Max and, and you and other people before I got into the sport. 
and then right as I got in, he was kind of getting out and getting into the air force and doing what he was doing. Yeah. And then now he's circling back. And so I have seen him, um, recently I saw him once, but we're not as tight as I, you know, know that he is with some of the other guys from back in the day earlier. Fair enough. Fair enough. You know, is Max Henry still in Colorado? Oh yeah, well I, that's the one that I see most often. Max and I get to train often, so I'll I'll see him this weekend. Yeah, he lives ten minutes from where I live, twenty tops. Oh wow! T- tell him we said hello. I will. He'll hear this. He listens. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Max. Hi, Max. He's gonna love it. He's gonna cry. Hopefully. <laughs> um. All right, you guys. I don't know. If, I think we covered pretty much everything that I wanted to. Is there anything like? going on in your lives that you want other people to know um what's no. next for you no. What's <laughs> happening? Keep all the secret, actually, so. no you got the yeah. capstone you got the posters do you want to plug the posters up there phil or anything oh, yeah. you're like you know what's the posters they're, they're got... from harvey fifth unit if you want to get any of oh, he, okay. took, he was there as one of the cameramen oh, yeah he like taking um taking the still images hmm. so all of the pictures you'd have seen as like during the build-up that were posted were taken by him or um ollie ollie, ollie dury uh, so if you both want legends. both legends yeah but harvey i know is doing prints of them so if you want any hit him up harvey fifth unit harvey doc fifth unit sick sick and what yeah, is this print. this lettering behind you you said you were repping what is that <laughs> eli and joe had a little arts and crafts day and they yeah. made a cab out of cardboard what's a cab all crops the bastards what they don't protect the people they protect property bitch oh okay oh yeah it's gonna get too controversial <laughs> no no i want to what is that wait a minute what is it your cops are worse than ours though. yeah all cops are Sorry. bastards oh oh all cops are bastards ah i see yeah. they protect the property not the people Ooh, mm-hmm. is this the Ooh. i'm i'm all, yeah i'm about that a cab life i mean oh come on come on <laughs> <laughs> i'm a. Uh, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. That's an interesting little slogan. Um, what is that from? Is that just from just English to, culture? It's a, massive, it's a massive thing, like a cab. Shit. See, it's it didn't make like its me. way across here. It's got to be a common tattoo now. Yeah. It's it may be a dead. You know what? I'm pretty out of touch. I got to keep my finger closer to the pulse of these anti-establishment movements. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, boys. Well, thank you guys for making the time. I really appreciate it. You guys are probably up late now so i appreciate you guys giving me your uh, evening. No, seven yeah it's yeah, seven, seven, seven o'clock in the evening time. yeah what no yeah you... sorry it took us a while to get this done but i feel like there was no rush there never is i hope to see you guys time, yeah. Yeah. fantastic time. I, 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 if joe if you're gonna make it out to denver that'd be great but i hope to come in may maybe june this year i want to go to england and or portugal um Definitely. Ooh, England. I'll go to Portugal with you as well. Yeah, I'll go. I'm Love going Portugal. to Portugal next weekend, actually. What? Oh, yeah? Yep. You driving there? Yeah, I'm driving. No, I'm getting a plane. Oh, for flat. goodness sake. <laughs> Think of the plan there. <laughs> <My God. laughs> That's why I don't fly. So. Cool. Lots of love. Lots of love to you guys, too. And, um, yeah, we'll catch you soon, hopefully, and uh, in the flesh next time. Yeah, hopefully. Indeed. All right, boys. I love you guys. Take care. Oh, yeah. Thank you for listening to this episode. Much love again to Phil and Joe and all those boys across the pond. We'll hopefully see them in person soon. And thank you guys for listening. Get in that description and do all that shh. That you know you need to do. And um, I'll catch you on that next one. Coming up soon. Got some surprises in order for you. In the next couple episodes. Enjoy.